artificially back on as I'm finishing my bunny food here so I can get back to my slim and trim former shape. <coughs> Let's put this out of the way. So I have been doing a little bit of uh, <coughs> colored pencil work in this piece. So let's come up a little closer and I'll show you what I'm doing here, okay? <coughs> this is Tundro from the Herculoids. He's a pretty cool guy. We get on the phone from time to time and share stories. Okay, so <clears throat> if you remember, he had this kind of greenish background. Well, he's mostly supposed to be gray. So I'm taking this colored pencil right here. Um, this happens to be a polychromos. <clears throat> I'm actually partial to um, <clears throat> the Prisma colors because they're softer. <clears throat> but honestly, I'm here to tell you that colored pencils are colored pencils to me. They're just kind of the same no matter which ones you use. <clears throat> some are softer, some are this, a little bit of that, but um, <clears throat> these ones right these ones right here, these um, polychromos are superior color pencils in the way they're made, <clears throat> but they're hard. <clears throat> they have very hard leads to them, <clears throat> and uh, I prefer to have um, leads that are a little softer than this. A little creamier, as, as you might say. So, <clears throat> I've been working in the colored pencil in, into this right here, <clears throat> and I'm getting some good effects. And <clears throat> it's, there's a lot of working back and forth right here with this kind of stuff. Um, you can see I've, I've given him, uh, you know, a realistic kind of effect rather than um, an outline effect. He's got, uh, <clears throat> he's made up of tonal shapes. Someone asked a question. Okay, so apparently uh, some of you eager types have already uh, gotten on the uh, the question horn here. So let's hear what you guys have to say here. Okay, while well, I'm working on uh, this uh, this goofy uh, tundra here. Hi, Mr. Reed. What's under the colored pencil? <clears throat> what's under the color? What's under the colored pencil is this right here. <clears throat> it's a watercolor base <clears throat> that is a, so I can get a flat color. Uh, <clears throat> it's darker than usual and uh, that way I can go over it with the colored pencil <clears throat> as I'm going to be showing you later on and bring out the lights, okay? Now I don't think illustration board is really primo for colored pencil. Uh, <clears throat> there are better papers than that to be used. Uh, <clears throat> um, so I'm experimenting with these papers right now and that's, that's actually a lot of fun for me. And someone else asked, is your base medium watercolor? Yeah, my base medium is watercolor. <clears throat> it's transparent watercolor. Uh, other times I have to go a little more opaque. <clears throat> There's a lot of opaque paint up in, in the Shazam character right here. <clears throat> but the final veneer is going to be color pencil because I want that uniform uh, <clears throat> kind of a textured look over the whole thing. So hopefully that answers that. You guys are doing really good about right in here, and so I'm happy to answer you. Uh, happy to answer things, uh, whatever you may want to ask me. I've got an indigo blue Prisma color right here that I'm working with. Someone said, "Do you prefer a smoother to tooth to your mm -hmm. paper?" Um, <clears throat> the question was, "Do I prefer a smoother tooth to my paper?" Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Every, every paper has got a different texture to it, and uh, <clears throat> one of the things I just got done ordering from Blick, um, whom I have a very good relationship with, the, the actual, actual guy that runs it, uh, Robert, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, thanks to some of the things I've seen on YouTube, I'm going to try a paper called Pastel Matte, <clears throat> and that seems to be a much superior paper to uh, the one that I'm using, the illustration board the crescent illustration board that I'm using here. I think it's going to give me <clears throat> the ability to layer a lot more and so give me a really good look. So I have, I, I've tried like a, a little sheet that they, they sent me as a trial sheet. <clears throat> but uh, you really have to, you, you don't really know what you're getting into until you actually start to use them. You have to get in there and throw yourself into the water before you can make any uh, firm judgments about how it's going to work. You've got to use it. Uh, 
never mind what you hear about it. You've got to physically use it yourself because everyone's going to have a different take on this stuff. The same board, different artists, and they're all going to say something a little different about it. Oh, I forgot his ear. <clears throat> Tundra's got his ears here. Um, yeah, he's got these goofy looking ears. So let's see, I'm going <clears> to <throat> go over, come over here and So based on what I know about uh, form, uh, this is how I'm going to work in his ears right here. And, uh, <clears throat> let's erase part of this right here so I can get <clears throat> that ear rendered a little better than the way I had it. See, just erase it. If you want, if you have a problem with something, just come in here and, and, and erase. Someone said, "I've been using American Masters for years, and it's not made anymore. Can't wait to try Pastel Matte." Okay. Yeah, American Masters. I'm going to assume that is in reference to a pastel paper. Uh, I have never heard of it myself, but uh, uh, <clears throat> the pastel matte. I just, uh, you know, even with a little. Um, trial sheet that I did some experiments on, I found it to be, to give me a whole different look, uh, one much preferable <clears throat> to the one I've, I've uh, <clears throat> been, been getting with uh, normal papers, like uh, illustration board, and um, uh, <clears throat> the paper that I've done other experiments on, which I'll show you right here, <clears throat> which is kind of my go-to paper. This is... Uh, <clears throat> Some successful ones that I've done in color pencil. Zoom in close and you can see <clears throat> some of the, the areas that I was able to get with this right here. You still see a texture to it. I don't think that's, that can be avoided, but uh, <clears throat> with the help of some opaque layering and some other transparent washes over it, I can get uh, a soft enough look, especially for female skin. <clears throat> that makes me happy. This is, uh, anyone who grew up when I did knows this girl. She's... Uh, Miss Star Trek, Sherry Jackson, from uh, one of the episodes that um, I think we all remembered quite fondly. What a beauty. <clears throat> so I did that. <clears throat> and I also did something recently, very recently, <clears throat> about a week ago, of my friend, um, another Star Trek guy. <clears throat> His name is Gary Lockwood. I think most of you know him <clears throat> from Star Trek in 2001, A Space Odyssey. Someone said, wonderful that you do this. I've been inspired by your work since I was a kid. Glad I was able glad I was able to speak with you a couple times. You were kind. Keep on inspiring people. Well, it's nice to know uh, that it was uh, helpful to somebody at a, at a show. <clears throat> I've heard stories of uh, some professional people that um, <clears throat> actually seem to dislike their fans, and I just... Uh, it's fairly incomprehensible to me. I wonder where they learned their manners from or what kind of parents they had. Um, the fan-pro relationship is a, is a very special thing. And uh, uh, you, never, you should never take that for granted. So I'm doing some little touch-ups on uh, Gary Lockwood here. Um, Gary, you need to buy this piece for me right here. It's only $3,000. But he's seen it, yeah. We're on the phone uh, a couple times a year. Recently, several times uh, a month, <laughs> actually. He's a really cool guy. <clears throat> but he comes across as a cowboy to a lot of people. So that's, <clears throat> I, picked a, um, I picked this photo right here <clears throat> to work from. And that's where I got the image from. Made a few changes in the outfit, <clears throat> as, uh, as people with imaginations tend to do. And there's one, there's one Gary Lockwood right there. The guy's got a bi uh, an autobiography coming out really soon, <clears throat> and it promises to be as interesting a thing as um, most people in Hollywood have done with their their life stories. Said so he's having trouble with the ending. So hey, Gary, I'm just a shout away. I'll give you an ending. So there we go. That's uh. 
That's Gary Lockwood right there. There's always something you can touch up on these things. But, yeah, there you go. A lot of fun. <clears throat> this went on very well, and that's the reason I'm showing you guys the color pencil aspect of it. Was, uh, it was a lot of fun. See the shape, the shapes in there? They're all designed. These are all very designed shapes. Deliberately designed. And that's part of the fun. <clears throat> we learn about shapes in school, in art school. And <clears throat> that's always been really helpful to me to, uh, <clears throat> to learn how to design things rather than just render literal shapes uh, as they might be in a photograph. You actually <clears throat> learn how to design them. <clears throat> and uh, a drawing can become more striking, more powerful with knowledge of uh, how you can design certain shapes. Someone said, what is the best way to buy art or sketches from you? <clears throat> the best way to buy art or sketches from me um, <clears throat> is to write my website. If you want something uh, or want a commission of any kind, uh, a lot of us artists um, uh, are routinely doing these um, as a way to supplement our, our, our income. So <clears throat> every time you buy something from an artist, it helps out the artists a lot in uh, as I used to as, as I used to say it kept the sillies in diapers but <clears throat> they're no longer in diapers <clears throat> so but there's always expenses right there's always expenses and these just uh, these doing these commissions are a lot of fun and they help out uh, artist and and buyer they're on our website steverud.com yeah yeah steverud.com as I recall I don't go to my own website. I happen to know Steve Root pretty well, <clears throat> but um, that's how you get a hold of me right there. <clears throat> so let's let's look at two Star Trek actors right here, Sherry Jackson, and uh, still a beautiful lady at uh, at well over seventy. And there's Gary Lockwood when he was youthful. A lot of fun, <clears throat> but they're not always successful. People, <clears throat> you have to work at these things. And, uh, Let's go back to um, the tundra here. We need a darker. This might this might be uh, helpful right here to go in with this darker p color pencil. <clears throat> now, if I'm got, not getting the look that I want, I'm going <clears throat> I'm going to uh, uh, erase the area and kind of build it up all over again. It sounds like a lot of work, and sometimes it can be, but. <clears throat> Because we're artists, hopefully, uh, the process of drawing is fun. Um, where's that light? Uh, <clears throat> we need that light, uh, light gray. Oh, it's right here. <clears throat> and you thought I, I didn't know where it was. So a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's a, it tends to be a, a building up process, but not always. Sometimes you can just go, you know, <clears throat> like that right there, and that works. It doesn't always work, though. Um, I think that has more to do with the paper than anything else. And <clears throat> right now, this, this pencil is going on in a very resistant kind of a way, which I don't like. But I'm, I'm still trying to work with it to show it who's boss here. See, <clears throat> he's stomping his feet here. And he's, he's getting up a cloud of dust. The nerve of this guy. This gray is a little darker. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and then we need to push little, little light areas. They're, I don't call them highlights. I just call them lighter areas. <clears throat> a te a technical highlights are uh, <clears throat> where the light is actually bleached out on a form because the light... Is, is is so strong <clears throat> that it will do that. Like there's highlights in his face, presumably because he's sweating right there. But there's always something you can work into this right here. I'm getting these. This is a green pencil. This is gonna give him a slight, uh, you know, color shift on his face, based on the fact that uh, guys have. Uh, five o'clock shadows sometimes. 
Who knows if Birdman shaved that day? You just never know. I think Harold's like came out to shave too. So <clears throat> I'm working it back and forth uh, because it seems to uh, demand that from me right now. This light green seems to be just, just the right kind of color. <clears throat> now you can also put different colors in here as I reach around to uh, <clears throat> find a different uh, color here. Or this kind of color right here. <clears throat> this kind of color. You can put some color shifts in his in his uh, in his hide here with <clears throat> a little bit of brown. Sometimes it really uh, tends to what I call activate the area a little more uh, <clears throat> with a different color shift going on in here. And <clears throat> as this form goes around, see it's going to get a little darker based on the fact that the light is coming from an upper area someplace. <clears throat> so I've got this ochre color right here. That'll be a really good color to activate this green. He's actually a very grayish blue here. <clears throat> but a Often you can take a lot of liberties with color. See those little areas sometimes they don't hurt anything. They they actually <clears throat> color can be a very malleable thing. See we're gonna punch out little things in there uh, to make the form look rounder. That's the purpose of this right here, to make it look rounder. Yesterday I showed you this this thing with uh, <clears> the <throat> A, a basic form, something that every artist um, are told about if you want to make things look dimensional. I used to laugh at that stuff when I was a kid, you know. Draw the draw the bunny, draw Binky. Well, <clears throat> I didn't want to draw Binky, I wanted to draw Snoopy or Charlie Brown and, <clears throat> and maybe a few uh, superheroes from my Jack Kirby comics, but um, So there's a lot of fusing going on here. I don't want to keep things too uh, up front. Where's my black? <clears throat> there's my black right here. <clears throat> I'm going to carve out the shape of that eye a little more right there. <clears throat> all these Herculoids get along really well. I have it in good authority that they're all good friends. He doesn't have a nostril in here, but <clears throat> I'm going to give him one. He's got to be able to breathe after all. I I also, <clears throat> uh, sometimes I get asked about uh, what I listen to when I'm working. Well, I listen to books and tape a lot. <clears throat> Those are my companions. <clears throat> and the ones that actually measure up, I keep listening to. The other ones, I uh, I trade in for something that actually is good. It's hard to find good books on tape. Okay, let's see. You see, in this in this case, it's a built-up process. <clears throat> in some ways, it's always it always involves a built-up process. But <clears throat> this is not a surface that one takes a color pencil really well, and when it doesn't, I erase it. You can either use a kneaded eraser, which is more subtle, <clears throat> or you can use a, a pink eraser. Or if you already want to get severe, use an ink, ink eraser. So you can see how the form is starting to come out a little bit, you know, see that? It's just, this is all fundamental stuff that every artist have to, has to know. You can't proceed unless you know fundamentals. <clears throat> and that little, that little bit of... Uh, color shifting going on isn't, isn't hurting anything right there. It's kind of giving, oftentimes it gives life to uh, an otherwise flat color. So there you go. <clears throat> There's also something that's uh, that they may call a, a colorless blender. 
and that's supposed to uh, add a lot of, I believe what it does is add wax <coughs> to the surface to kind of blend in or burnish, as they love to call it, um, <coughs> the pencil on the surface. <coughs> and this is going to be just another way to smooth out uh, the little pits and bumps that occur uh, in, in any kind of paper manufacturing. <coughs> and you can see a very subtle shift going on there <coughs> that's uh, making this stuff um, look, look, give, it, give it a smoother look. And I don't, I don't, this is a case where you don't use the tip. This, <coughs> this use the side here. Um, <coughs> all artists, are, if they're trained well, are one of the first things they learn in art school is to uh, <coughs> use the side of your pencil so you get, you know, a sweeping look instead of a, uh, <coughs> a linear look. So here are, all the, here are all the pencils I have in my hand right here. Um, <coughs> let's continue with this right here and fill in a few of the pits. Whenever I say the word pit, I'm reminded of a commercial from a long time ago um, about sunset prunes. Today the pits, tomorrow the wrinkles. Sun sweet marches on. Ten points if you remember that commercial. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing here. Even the dark areas can be smoothed out a little bit. So <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of little things you can buy, you know, <clears throat> to uh, uh, get the look that you want. Artists are very particular about the look that they want. I don't want to. I don't want to see a lot of texture in this stuff. <clears throat> so this is one way to do it. The other way is to go in with thin layers of opaque paint. Um, <clears throat> let's see, is there anything here that I want to smooth out? It's very subtle, but uh, it's nice to know that you have uh, options. Some people use an airbrush, some people use this, they use that. Who knows? You know, there's just so many different ways based entirely on the hand that's um, using the tool. Can we fill in some of those pits there? <clears throat> but there is a there's a very subtle smoothing effect going on as I run this uh, colorless blender <clears throat> over the surface here. And I like the way it looks. It's something different from people that are used to me working in a certain way. <clears throat> here, let's go down to this area right here. <clears throat> this is very grainy looking. So here's grainy and here's with a colorless blender right there. Let's continue up and see what it looks like here. Yeah, it does, it does smooth it out uh, quite a bit. I'm pressing, uh, not very lightly here, I'm pressing enough to, I'm pressing hard enough to get what I want. Just like all of you do. <clears throat> this is a stubborn area right here, so I'll just keep, uh, I'll just keep working it. <clears throat> Some of those gaps seem to be filling in. That's what artists call the tooth of the paper. I don't know why they call it tooth. <clears throat> to me, it's just easier to call them bumps. Okay, so... <clears throat> seems to be doing the trick here. However, slightly. This is what you do when you're an artist, guys. You, you experiment. And you, you push pencil around, you push lead around, you push ink around, you push paint around. <clears throat> and you try to see... Um, what works. <clears throat> we all have preferences of how we want our work to look. <clears throat> and that's usually based on uh, what we've seen that's come before us. <clears throat> the other great artists that are providing uh, <clears throat> a guiding light for us to uh, refer to as we try to find our own path in life as artists. <clears throat> so, I think Tundra is, is kind of... Uh, Kind of, kind of sort of done here. <clears throat> I think we can add something <clears throat> to his mouth here. So let's find a dark red. <clears throat> and uh, this is another um, polychromos right here. These are, like I was saying before, these are hard leads. 
hard lead for a hard world. And my preference is uh, not for a hard lead. So let's see, he's going to have some things up in his mouth there. <clears throat> so let's grab, let's grab this dark purple right here. <clears throat> and from what I remember from animals, uh, having been around him and had him my whole life, <clears throat> sometimes there's these like uh, <clears throat> circular forms to explain the upper part of uh, the shape of their mouths. <clears throat> so I'm going to, I'm going to put a few of those in there. They're going to be subtle. <clears throat> if I don't want them to be subtle, I'll make them dark. If I want them to be subtle, I'll just keep them in. <clears throat> I'll keep them very, very subtle. They're noticeable, but they're not overtly noticeable. In other words, they don't distract. If I want them to be darker, I press harder. This is a pretty dark purple uh, uh, pencil right here. This is a Prismacolor. There's all these different brands, guys. I mean, <clears throat> you're here to experiment with as many as, uh, of these as you can. <clears throat> and that's how you find your preference. Some people love the polychromos. They just go on and on about them. Martino said, Is this a commission question mark? Sorry if, sorry if I missed the answer earlier. <clears throat> uh, a friend of mine, Martino, um, <clears throat> who I believe is living up in Canada, asked, if this is a personal commission for anything, or a commission for, uh, <clears throat> say, a, a DC job. Well, the, I, I've already done an official cover for this Birdman comic book here. <clears throat> I think it came out in Future, Future Quest. Uh, <clears throat> I'll have to grab that a little later on but to show you the differences. But um, this is something I, I started. I don't exactly remember why. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to include more characters, like these guys right here. <clears throat> and Frank and Sam Jr. <clears throat> and the original cover, uh, they might have told me to ditch these other characters. I might have gotten too eager and wanted to start before I was officially given the green light. <clears throat> and I drew this one up. And then <clears throat> when the word came down to uh, get rid of some of these other characters, I just started a new piece. And that's how... <clears throat> That's how this piece came to be. It was actually the original version of what I was going to do. Uh, <clears throat> and they told me, well, let's, let's uh, take out some of these characters right here because they're not really in the book. Uh, you know, what do I care, right? When do I listen to editors? Anyway, so we're supposed to be moving on here. But uh, in typical rude form, I'm getting carried away here. Let's reach over here. And some of this pencil is not sticking to the surface, and that's a problem with all, all, all of these, these pencils right here. They will stop sticking at some point, depending on the surface that you're working on. So, if I want to get a cleaner version of that light, I have to, um, I have to erase it. Erase it down to the board. All you're doing is getting rid of the wax. Someone said, "Great art. I'm a big fan." Well, thank you. Someone wrote in there that are that they like the art and they're a big fan, so that's nice to hear. <clears throat> I'm giving them a couple of wrinkles here, um, just because it just feels like the right thing to do. I'm gonna fuse these areas right here so they don't they don't stand out a whole lot. Someone said the great heroes of Hanna Barbera. Yeah, yeah, these were great cartoons. I feel sorry for anyone that didn't grow up in this during this time. Uh, <clears throat> but a lot of guys at a certain age will say that. We all look at our own time of birth as <clears throat> probably the best, as I certainly do. Okay, so we <clears throat> we have some uh, we have some smoke down there, <clears throat> some dust, <clears throat> which I th I think is uh, kind of nice. I actually like it because it means he's moving his his uh, hose a little bit. <clears throat> I added that because um, <clears throat> I didn't want him to be stagnant. So if he's if he's going like this, uh, <clears throat> there's some there's some indication that he's. He's moving his his hose or his paws or whatever. 
Someone said, your work is fantastic, Steve. Yeah, that's nice. Someone just gave me a nice compliment on my, on my work. And another, thanks for, thanks for showing us your incredible art. Yeah, that's very nice. You guys are very, very kind. Another one, first generation Herculoids and Space Ghost fan here. Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, if you guys can hear that, if you're first generation fan of these fan of these old old cartoons, that means that must mean you're <clears throat> you're well in uh, well into your late fifties or or sixties or or seventies. Who knows? Another person asked, "What type of paper are you using?" <clears throat> The paper that I'm working on right now is, uh, is the illustration board. And a word about the illustration board. Uh, <clears throat> I've heard my whole life that if you want the board not to bend, <clears throat> you, you water it on, on both sides and it dries flat. Well, I'm here to tell you <clears throat> that has never happened to me. Because every time I get this board wet, it starts to bow again. Does it drive me nuts? Yeah, you could say that. So <clears throat> that's why I ended up... Uh, using these clips right here and a piece of gator board uh, <clears throat> to secure it before it would get more warped in me. And there's a trick to doing that non-bending board thing. Uh, I have yet to learn it in 40 years. Someone else said, wow, this doesn't look like pencil work. Great work. Yeah, <clears throat> in a lot of ways I don't want it to look like pencil work. I want it to look like uh, some kind of a hybrid technique of some kind. So, um, yeah, I try. I try to uh, try to work work the the medium here so that it's it's kind of you can't really tell what it is. <clears throat> Actual color pencil looks looks like this right here, <clears throat> but if you model it, if you model the forms <clears throat> enough, uh, <clears throat> you can start to get something out of it that it resembles um, a nice textured uh, <clears throat> hybrid of something. Like, this is supposed to be a hybrid of paint and pencil right here. Where's my white? Where's my white? <clears throat> and that's the kind of look that I want. I don't want it to look like, uh, like this straight colored pencil. Uh, I've seen guys on, on different YouTube videos make this look as smooth as glass. Um, I don't know how they're able to do that. Um, <clears throat> My hat's off to these guys, but I'm I'm of a different uh, uh, temperament and, me and methodology that makes me that makes the work come out like it all came from my hand. I think that's inevitable. Someone said, "I'm a great Brazilian fan of your art, man. You are the guy." Some guy from Brazil wrote in, and I've been uh, I've never been to um, Brazil before been to South America. I've been to Chile. Some people were nice enough to invite me down. That was a lot of fun. <clears throat> I met some uh, some actors down there that were also flown in. And uh, it's really interesting to meet some of these people <clears throat> because you never know what you're going to get with some of these actors. A lot of them are nothing what they're like on TV. Um, for shame. <clears throat> they're not the heroic types they, sh they should be. <clears throat> Others are very kind and very thoughtful. So... It's like anything else we meet in, in our day-to-day -day encounters with people. That's not going on very well. It's not sticking. So I erase the wax so I have a chance to uh, to put it down uh, in, a, in, a, in a more agreeable form here. Someone said, this is awesome. It looks better than Alex Ross. Looks better than Alex Ross. Alex, are you listening to that? Alex and I are good buddies. We're on the phone on occasion, a couple times, uh, um, uh, three or four times a year, I'd say. They're both pretty busy, but yeah, he's, <clears throat> Alex is a great guy. <clears throat> Him and I have always been, always been close. We visited each other's homes several times, and, uh, <clears throat> Alex, uh, Alex's technique is, is, uh, he's very happy to stick to his, uh, his, uh, watercolor or his washes with his gouache paint. <clears throat> now, I've tried gouache paint, and, I've gotten some good results, but honestly, it's watercolor to me. If you use it transparently, it is just like watercolor. I don't, I don't detect any difference. Yeah, someone just asked, what paint do you use? It looks like gouache. It's uh, <clears throat> gouache or watercolor. Honestly, people, it's it's the same to me. 
If you use it transparently, it's the same. <clears throat> if you use it opaquely, it's the same too. I don't see any difference that I've been working with both for a long time. <clears throat> and I've never, I've never found a reason to look at it as, uh, as um, two separate things. Someone said, when will we get a Nexus film? When, okay, th th there's a question near and dear to my heart. If you, if you tuned in earlier <clears throat> when we began this a live stream, <clears throat> I was uh, showing you some stuff that I had done on the Nexus cartoon show. Something I am always working on. <clears throat> and I'm working on it because it's, it's fun. <laughs> I love working on this thing. <clears throat> so when are we going to see a Nexus film? We're going to see a Nexus film uh, <clears throat> when the people that can green light these things give us a green light. Um, Mike Richardson and I are, have been working on this for a long time now. <clears throat> it's, I, I am firmly in belief that it's going to happen because of Mike Richardson. Um, from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Mike is just a super guy. He's one of the, the best people that, that wears a suit and tie that I've ever met. And it's just great to have a guy that I, I, I believe in so so firmly and trust so well <clears throat> to be part of this, uh, this uh, ongoing um, pursuit of getting the Nexus cartoon show. So I guess it's time to be serious here. Let's back off for a little bit here. I'm going to tell you about why this cartoon show is so important to me. Um, first off, I'm going to go over and grab some of the folders that I've done right here. And this is actually, uh, if you look up here, these are the stacks of folders that I've done that have animation uh, in anticipation of every imaginable scene <clears throat> that you could ever expect from a cartoon show. So let's move over here, and I'm going to sit down again and go through some of this stuff with you, <clears throat> and also explain why the show is of such importance to me. Uh, <clears throat> why this show is so important to me. One th for one thing, and remember this is coming long before there ever actually is a show in the air. <clears throat> I believe uh, the show will change the world for the better. I've said that for 20, going on 30 years now. I began this thing this idea of the Nexus cartoon show when I moved from Wisconsin to LA and got involved in a lot of animation friends you know, that knew about my work and <clears throat> I've been working on it ever since. We finally put out a two minute pilot <clears throat> that I did with the help of people from DreamWorks, some occasional people from Disney <clears throat> and just plain fans of, of Nexus that wanted to help out. Uh, you can see that all online as far as that two minute pilot goes but uh, <clears throat> I honestly believe that that this show of which there has never been another kind like since uh, Johnny Quest or Space Ghost uh, all those years ago will uh, be something that's, um, that will be responsible for changing the world for the better. <clears throat> and we'll only have to see it on the air before we realize <clears throat> that these things can come true right here. Such is my belief in all of this, what I'm doing. <clears throat> Here's some layouts right here. <clears throat> that's just a spy and some uh, some installment, <clears throat> some alien, alien installment that he's going to be taking on here. Remember, these are all made up. This is not part of something that happened in a comic book. <clears throat> these are moments that I've drawn up in anticipation of events that may take place in the show. <clears throat> if they take place, great. <clears throat> if they don't, I'll redraw them. <clears throat> Here's a reverse view right here. Because <clears throat> we're going to cut from here to here, which is more of a close-up. <clears throat> Here's a lot of what is this? What does this say? Standing shots right here? Poses. Standing, standing poses. Okay, so here's like standing. Here's a close-up view right here. Here's his mouth moving, just as in the old Hanna Barbera cartoon show. <clears throat> I think everything would be should be designed with an with a with a um, uh, with the, the idea that it should be cost effective. Because <clears throat> a lot of times you don't need to do overboard animation and stuff. <clears throat> These shows, Johnny Quest and Space Ghost, the shows that I grew up on, <clears throat> were all based on great layouts that moved just enough to keep the characters alive. <clears throat> so there's another standing pose right there. <clears throat> Whole bunch of standing poses here. <clears throat> Here's a head close-up. <clears throat> moves his mouth. <clears throat> Here's another Nexus stealth pose right here. Uh, oh, this is the close-up. He's going to turn his head. So <clears throat> there's the close-up of a medium shot of that, that same view, and he's going to turn his head. There's the master shot, the long shot, 
There's the close-up, and there's the head moving around. Because <clears throat> character, characters always move their head in those old HP cartoons. What do we have here? So let's start out with uh, <clears throat> There's the, the long shot. <clears throat> there's Nexus turning around, giving us a thumbs up, or something, to, something resembling, get this guy out of here. <clears throat> here's Nexus leaning against some some uh, rock formation. <clears throat> Again, I don't know what the what it, the scene would be for, but it's there if we need them. <clears throat> and this is something that no show ever goes into production having. They don't have these things ready. They have to be scripted first, <clears throat> and then they're drawn up after that. I'm not waiting around for that. <clears throat> I'm getting it on right now. Getting it on. <clears throat> here's, here's the shot right here <clears throat> where he's standing, <clears throat> and he's going to move his head a little bit. <clears throat> and that's all you need to keep the character alive and moving right there. What do we have here? Is this, uh, is this a, uh... We have about 20 minutes left. <clears throat> I've been informed by our ace camera person here that we have 20 minutes left before the battery dies. <clears throat> before I have to leave. <clears throat> yeah. What is this right here? So he's firing his rays right there. <clears throat> I, I must have... Three dozen poses of him firing his rays in all different configurations, body configurations. <clears throat> so I think right here what's going on is his hand is moving a little bit. It's kind of moving back and forth a little bit. So it's not just a held cell. What do we have going on here? So I don't know. This and that, you know, <clears throat> standard arm fold kind of things. Um, <clears throat> here's Nexus. Um, working out some personal problems, it looks like. <clears throat> there he is. And I think we move to a close-up. Close up, <clears throat> and his head moves up. He's probably talking to somebody like Dave here. Um, you know, look at all this stuff right here that we've, we've got going on. <clears throat> Side views, back views, front views, top views, bottom views. <clears throat> it's all ready to go. Get ready for a wrestling, a mud wrestling contest there. Just uh, tons and tons of stuff. <clears throat> a lot of these poses were based on things I saw from Johnny Quest. <clears throat> these are race banner poses right here, I think. <clears throat> so there he is, and his head turns. <clears throat> this is head, <clears throat> and his hand withdraws a little bit. <clears throat> That's the animation that I want <clears throat> with this show. There we go. These are head movements right here. <clears throat> so starting from there, just his head move. That's all you need. If you don't need more, you're wasting your time because you don't need it. Uh, <clears throat> every imaginable pose is ready to, is ready to go with the advent of a green light. <clears throat> this pose right here, I struggled with that for years. Uh, <clears throat> it's such a simple pose, but I had a for some reason I had a hard time with it. <clears throat> I think I finally got it down now. Back and forth. This one's a little looser, but I'll have to tighten them someday. Just tons of stuff. <clears throat> this is how a lot of drawings start out right there. <clears throat> and then they go from there to a tighter drawing. A lot of this, a lot of that. This one's actually inked right here with a marker. <clears throat> that's what the that's what the cells are gonna look like when they're finally <clears throat> when they're finally done. So that's what I got going on there. <clears throat> and I have uh, the folders are probably are a good uh, six, six to seven inches high. That's a lot of paper right there. <clears throat> so this is my great contribution to the world. <clears throat> I believe in it like I breathe it, uh, like the air that I breathe. I just think it's going to be something that's so important that uh, <clears throat> um, it'll do the kind of things for me that my shows do for me. <clears throat> so let's go back to rendering here. We have a lot of comments. Oh, apparently we've got some comments. That's very nice to hear. Thank you for writing in, everyone. Someone said, Steve, I see, you that, I see that you are a Suns fan. Do you usually watch the NBA games? Question mark. If so, who is winning the championship this year? <clears throat> um, I'm a little embarrassed to tell you that I'm not really a sports fan. <clears throat> My, the Root family growing up was, were Packer, uh, Packer craze. They were always there in front of the TV on Sundays. I was usually drawing in another room. Uh, <clears throat> I got that Suns uniform from yesterday because <clears throat> I attended a game 
uh, that the sons were playing. It was a lot of fun, and it was superhero day, so they invited me to come along, and they ended up giving me uh, a custom-made uniform. And but I had a lot of fun there. I met a lot of people, and it was it was a great time to be backstage at the at the basketball sons game. So that's the reason I have the shirt. I'm not really. Um, <clears throat> I'd rather be honestly working than watching sports and TV. So there's there's the uh, hard, cruel answer on that. Someone said, "Sorry, but how can I get in and work for comic book publishers?" Question mark. Do I contact the publisher of my interest directly? Thanks. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the best thing that I've found to do, if you're trying to break into the business, is do a face to face. You can do all the emailing you want, but when I wanted to break into comics, I flew from Wisconsin to New York. I took a train, a plane. Uh, I never took an automobile, but I took all those other things. <clears throat> I even hitchhiked uh, to Ohio to meet one of my favorite artists at the time, uh, Paul Big G. Galassi. And <clears throat> basically, um, where, where everyone would find a reason to not do something, I always found a reason to do something uh, <clears throat> that would get me what I wanted in life. Uh, I was never held back by people's opinions or uh, what they always will tell you about what you can't do in life. I don't believe in those things. I never have. I still don't. <clears throat> so you're there to get what you want. Uh, whatever you have to do to get in, you do. But use your use your head first. Think about it. I mean, a face-to-face -face is always going to be better <clears throat> than just a bunch of letters. Because er if everyone's sending in letters, how are you going to stand out from the guys that are doing the standard procedure? So think about things like that, and I think it's going to be it's going to serve you well about getting into the you know, the business you like so much. Someone else said, "If it came down to crowdfunding, I would definitely contribute." I assume he's talking about the TV show. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, fortunately, we don't have to worry about crowdfunding. Uh, it's it's high time that we we all uh, got professionally funded here by the by the big boys. That's what happens when you, you start getting a TV show. Uh, <clears throat> you're given uh, probably uh, close to a million dollars an episode. Someone else said, thank you, Steve, for your contributions. Um, We're showing the nexus. I'm happy to give you my contributions. I have with me an addition from Alias. Yeah, that's nice. Somebody's just calling in the... Uh, to say that they've got some of the books that we've done over the years. I should remind you guys, <clears throat> in fact, the next live stream, I'm, I'm going to be doing this right here. Um, <clears throat> I have been working on um, the, uh, uh, the uh, what is it called? The, the, uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a graphic novel. In other words, this is a big comic book. It's called The, Power of, the Coming of Gormando. <clears throat> and that's going to be this huge... Uh, almost 200 page uh, <clears throat> huge comic book that'll be coming up from Dark Horse very soon and uh, um, that's what I've been working on for four years now uh, it's mostly produced uh, entirely by myself with help from Mike Barron and my longtime partner my longtime beloved partner whom you saw doing live streams with me a couple of weeks back when he visited so <clears throat> I think the battery's going to die the fate of all machines but you just love those things so we're going to continue this with a, a broadcast probably coming up um, at a time when I know nothing about. So when it does come about, we will let you know. And I'll probably be finishing this right here uh, as we work uh, more on finishing this color pencil watercolor thing. And I'll be talking more about uh, the coming of Ormondo, which is really something to look forward to. Take care. We'll see you next time.